Cynthiana, Indiana is a peaceful rural town loved for its strong sense of community and safe environment. The town is known for its beautiful creek and parks and perfect for quiet walks and appreciating nature's diversity. It was jolted awake on August 8th, late last night, by a magnitude 2.6 earthquake that rocked Poise County, shaking the heart of the Wabash Valley seismic zone. With residents feeling the rumble and a history of massive quakes, is Indiana on the edge of a disaster? So I thought I'd give you some information and dive into this seismic scare. Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe. YouTube has now got AI that's taken over the controls of just about everything here on YouTube. So make sure you're still subscribed. A lot of people have been um, unsubscribed lately. Uh, yeah, mistake. Yeah, AI. At 10.06 p.m., a magnitude 2.6 quake struck two kilometers east southeast of Cynthiana. It's a small town and declining in population, somewhere between five and six hundred people. Many of the buildings are, uh, yeah, brick and mortar, um, so they probably wouldn't stand up to a very large earthquake. A lot of older homes, and I can't even find what would be considered Main Street in this town. They have one church. This is BJ's Pizza. <laughs> this here is Route 66 Tavern. Uh, they opened last year, but it doesn't look like they're open anymore. I could be wrong. Here we have uh, what's supposed to be the Town Marshal. That's the building there. And this would be City Hall. Kind of reminds me of a small town that I lived in in Oregon. About 150 residents felt weak shaking in Cynthiana, Evansville, and Mount Vernon. No damage or injuries, but yeah, the jolt, jolt did wake up some nerves. In 1968, Illinois' earthquake, um, a new Madrid event, was the largest recorded in the U.S. Midwestern state. Now that earthquake struck at 11.02 a.m. on November 9th. It measured 5.3 on the Richter scale. Although no fatalities occurred, the event caused considerable structural damage to buildings, including uh, the tops of chimneys. That earthquake was one of the most widely felt in the U.S. history, largely affecting about 23 states over an area of 580,000 square miles. Here on Google Earth is the location of that earthquake right there. And I also have drawn out the Wasatch Valley Fault Zone. This is probably responsible for uh, today's earthquakes and you can see them all marked along here along this fault zone. 2008 close to the same location there was a magnitude 5.2. Boy, I'm all tongue-tied, sorry. So we'll go back to, the to today's 2.6, which is down over here. The USGS felt map shows it was felt all the way by St. Louis. And oh, mostly the reports that they do have posted are from within this location. Now, because of this earthquake, let me go back down over there. I have it listed as 5.3, but it may have been revised. Um, when they did the research for this quake, scientists discovered the Cotton Grove Fault in the southern um, Illinois basin. Within this region, millions felt the rupture. Research to the earthquake varied. Some people near the epicenter did not react to the shaking, while others panicked. Geologists say that there is a 90% chance of a magnitude or magnitude 7 earthquake within this location. And such a quake would probably originate in the Wabash Valley seismic zone in the Illinois-Indiana border 
or the New Madrid fault zone. I got those all drawn out. And you can see here, yeah, this whole area in green. Now, the green area is what's called the um, Illinois Basin. The red is the Wasatch Valley Seismic Zone. And then down to the salt south is the New Madrid um, Seismic Zone. Yeah, it's all connected. Just different names for different sections. I believe I do have... The Cottonwood Fault Zone drawn out somewhere in here. Let's see. Um, it would be a blue line. It might be this one right here. Yeah, that's a Cottonwood Fault Zone. That's the one they discovered. Now, Douglas Wines, a professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences, reported that the strongest earthquake in recent times have come from this location here. The Wabash Valley Fault, which I got drawn out in red going right through the smack center of that circle. He also said that the fault needs more scientific observation. And then um, Steve Obenmeyer of the United States USGS um, is also one of the several scientists who have found sediments suggesting that the Wabash Valley Fault earthquakes could have, you know, an earthquake around seven or greater on the Richter scale. In the last 20 years, there have been three magnitude five or better earthquakes on the Wabash Valley Fault. There is evidence also that sometime in the past, um, the Wabash Valley Fault has produced a strong earthquake of a magnitude seven. On the other hand, they say that the New Madrid Fault has been very quiet for a long time. And clearly, the Wabash Fault has gotten, um, you know, the attention that it does deserve, but it needs more attention. More research needs to be done. Now, the zones 1811-1812, New Madrid earthquake, shook Cynthiana. Um, in 2008, there was a 5.2. Um, the quake rattled thousands. One lady in Evansville said that she felt today's or last night's earthquake. Um, it was faint. But because of the Wabash Valley sediment that's within this area, which is really quite thick, yeah, it amplifies the earthquakes. So people would feel the earthquake over a much larger area. There hasn't been any aftershocks reported, but yeah, that still lingers. So are you prepared for a large earthquake within this location? Yeah, um, something people probably don't think about, you know, about this um, Wabash Fault Valley zone in the past large earthquakes. Or do you think about it? Are you prepared? Please put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.